Hi, this is Jim Janesey with DePaul's Information Services Instructional Technology Support Unit. I'm going to show you how to download FileZilla for FTP transfers. I've gone to Google and I'm just typing in FileZilla. Best place to go is right here with FileZilla and the project that's created it. So let's just hit the Enter key and we'll do that. And we go to FileZilla the free FTP solution. Now we're recommending this because it's been installed in computer science labs and it replaces the software we previously recommended for uploading to DePaul server. I'm going to download the FileZilla client for all platforms. It's this leftward button. So if I click download FileZilla client I have some choices. I'm going to be working in the Windows environment so I would download this one that I've highlighted in red. If you're working on a Mac you probably want this one down towards the bottom of the screen. If you have a modern Mac, it's based on Intel chips. Older Macs are based on other types of hardware. But I think with a Mac, a contemporary Mac, you'd want this one. I'm going to go here and download this item by clicking on it. And in this case, I get this message saying that the download will start. Your system may react differently to that. I have to save the file and I have a folder already established in my C drive and I'll just click the save button and it will get downloaded to there. Why this is coming up blank in my case I have no idea. You might have this populated in yours but if I look down here in the folder I'll see that I already have FileZilla downloaded. It's come down and this other screen that appears here apparently needs information in it but didn't have it. So once you have the FileZilla exe file for install. You find it on your drive. It may have been in my documents. It may have been here in a downloads folder. Once you click on that, you may get this message that says the publisher couldn't be verified. It has to do with some security issue, some certificate. Not really a problem for us. We simply want to run this and we'll step now through the installation process on a PC. This is it's uh, open software, so this GNU license covers the kinds of things you can do with it. I'm just scrolling through it. I didn't really read it that fast. I'm agreeing to those conditions. And on this next screen, I'm going to leave it indicating that anyone who uses this computer can use this software. I don't see any problem with that, especially if it's you're the only one using the computer. There's no reason to try and limit it by name. So just click the next button here. It will be handy to have a desktop icon. Uh, these other items that are checkmarked here for installation are required for the installation, but I would suggest you click this desktop icon also so that you have an icon placed on your desktop that's a convenient way for you to access this software. Then click Next. And this is just where the file is going to be placed on your system, the executable files, and this is the common place for it in your program files folder. So I'll just click Next. And as to where it's going to place this, and let's install now, and it'll take just a few minutes to do this. All right. And I'm going to unclick the Start FileZilla now, because when I finish this install process, what I'd like to do is demonstrate how you get into FileZilla you now have an icon on your desktop and you can move that to anywhere you want to. I'm just going to move it here. You'll notice my desktop has kind of a colorful background here. This is a picture from the National Geographic and I just used it to replace the uh, standard Windows uh, desktop. Now the FileZilla client, when you have this on your computer you double click it in order to start FileZilla. I'm going to do that right now and it comes up with this screen. I'm going to cover the use of the screen in another short video tutorial. It's part two of the FileZilla tutorials and I'd suggest at this point you go ahead and tune in to that video to see how you run FileZilla every time that you want to upload something to one of the DePaul servers. Thanks a lot. My name is Jim Janesey and we're happy to provide this series of tutorials for your instructional purposes.